When I was younger, before reaching the age of 17, boys at school always had to learn judo or kendo. This was a part of education at school. So until I was 17, I was learning kendo. When I went to university at the age of 17, my idea was to continue to learn kendo. At university, there was a group that practiced kendo. One day, believing that I had went into a classroom where there would be a demonstration of kendo, I made a mistake and I went into a classroom when they were doing karate. At the time, karate was not very popular. Very few people learned karate. But I had the chance that there was a group that was studying karate. This group was not an official group of the university. Among them, there was a very old man. This man was the master Funakoshi. They asked me if I was interested in learning karate. I was not interested at first, but I started and I have gone on studying it for 74 years. Have you continued to practice kendo or any other martial art at the same time as karate? After starting to study karate, I haven't studied kendo nor any other martial art. I have just devoted myself to karate. What are the main objectives of the Shotokan Karate? Is it self-defense, physical preparation, DO, or is it a set or everything? First, it is important to know what Shotokan means, because Japanese know it by another name, the name of Shoto. A word that Master Funakoshi liked to use and which he learned as a child when he studied at a school in Okinawa. In order to fully answer that question, before I would like to talk a little about the history of karate. In 1922, the Japanese Department of the Interior planned a sort of exhibition of this sport, because in those years, Japanese people didn't know what karate was, since karate came from Okinawa. Therefore, they asked in Okinawa and found out that there was a sport called Tote, and that Mr. Funakoshi knew a lot about that. That's why they invited him to that exhibition in Tokyo. That was the first time that Japanese saw a sport of this kind, and that is what we now call karate. Then, Master Funakoshi, from the moment he came to Tokyo until he died, worked for karate to become as popular as judo and kendo. Until he came to Tokyo, that was not the case, as it was called Tote, and didn't have the name of karate nor was a sport. So it was something very local, but the nature of this martial art changed after Master Funakoshi came to Tokyo. Did it become the most popular karate? Yes, it did, because judo and kendo were the oldest Japanese sports, and they were more popular than karate. But now, kendo, judo and karate are almost at the same level. Until 1935, the name of karate do didn't exist. This is the official name it has now. We can see the word do as in judo or kendo. The word do means path. And in Japanese sports, they have always put the word do. At first, as I have said, it was only tote, and it wasn't considered a Japanese sport. But in 1935, Master Funakoshi published a book called Karate Do, and from that time the Tote has been regarded as one of the official sports in Japan, and Master Funakoshi taught karate to students at university. It seems that there are many styles of karate in Japan, but this is not the case. Many people think that Shotokan Karate is a style, and that is not true. In 1938, Master Funakoshi opened a dojo called Shotokan, but it is not a style, as many people think but that is the name of this dojo. Shotokan doesn't have a main or political objective in itself, because Master Funakoshi didn't think that karate had many different styles. When people see me, they say that Nakayama is a member of the Shotokan, and I always say that I belong to the Karate Association of Japan. I'm not from Shotokan. Actually, I started to learn karate with Master Funakoshi, that's all. So people think and say that I am Nakayama from Shotokan, but I say that I am Nakayama of the Japanese Karate Association. 
In this case, a person of another style of karate, as the Gohu Ryu or Shito Ryu, should he say that he makes karate or should he say that he practices his particular style? In fact, they are all karate. They all should be under the name of karate. Are all these styles derived from art who Funakoshi practiced? No, they aren't. There are four main sectors of her styles. One is the Japanese Karate Association, founded by Master Funakoshi. Another one is Wado Ryu, from Master Otsuka, who was a student of the group of Mr. Funakoshi. He was my partner. But in 1941, he was separated from Master Funakoshi and he created Wado Ryu. Then there are Gohu Ryu and Shitu Ryu, which were founded by Okinawa Masters. Then Mr. Funakoshi went to Tokyo. People at university began to learn karate. Among them, there were lawyers or painters, that is, people of a high social level. This surprised Okinawan people and made many people emigrate from Okinawa to Tokyo. Among these people, there were some of them who studied these two styles and they began to teach it in Tokyo. The idea is that all of them are karate, although they have a different style of practice. There are other smaller styles, but all derive from these four. In 1962, a group of karateka, among whom there were Gogo Yamakuchi, Kenei Mabuni, Manso Iwata, founded a Japanese federation of karate. What can you say about this group of karateka? Master Mabuni comes from Osaka, and Master Iwata was Master Mabuni's pupil, but it worked in a different area. Mabuni was in Osaka, and Iwata was in Tokyo. Master Yamaguchi also had some students in Osaka. So we decided to contact masters from different areas to form the Japanese Federation of Karate and cover the whole country. Is there any difference between Gohu Ryu from Japan and from Okinawa? Who leads the Gohu Ryu from Okinawa? The Gohu Ryu has much to do with China, more than other styles. Master Migaji who comes from Okinawa, has traveled to China many times to learn techniques and adapt them to Gohu Ryu. Currently, there is not much difference in the forms. What was the working method of the group formed by the Japanese Federation? Is there any anecdote you can tell us about that? The first thing they wanted to do was to learn the technique of its style. So they did meetings to exchange technical knowledge of the different styles. The Japanese Karate Federation was created for that, to exchange technical details about the styles, and especially to prepare competitions at national and international levels. The first karate competition was organized in 1957. It was organized by the GKI, the Japanese Karate Association, to which I belong. There were people from other sectors, and even within our own organization, who didn't want to have any karate competitions. And before in the world of karate, competitions were forbidden. Master Funakoshi never gave us his opinion about whether he was in favor or against this competition. But eventually, we planned this competition. Before karate was used for physical education or as a means of self-defense. People knew karate as something useful for physical education. But after the success of this competition, people realized that there was another way to learn karate. People began to see karate as a sport, a way to win the competition. This competition in 1957 didn't encourage the leaders of other styles, such as Wado Ryu, to organize competitions. The second competition was organized by the Federation of Students. The karate is not only combat. Katas are also important. When we planned the competition, I insisted a lot that it was very important not to lose katas, so that people don't just think about combat, and also deal with the forms. For it, I began to study sports like synchronized swimming, which is based on dance and on forms. 
You have said that Master Funakoshi didn't give his opinion for or against the competitions, but we know that he admonished Master Otsuka for trying to organize competitions of free combat, which is why Master Otsuka left Funakoshi's dojo with a few students. What can you tell about that? Mr. Otsuka left Funakoshi's dojo in 1930, long before this. After this first competition, Karate Do became more popular. After the Second World War, many foreign military came in Japan, mostly US military, who sought great interest for Karate. In 1948, a master of Judo, a master of Kendo and I as a master of Karate, we formed a group and visited a foreign military camps. We were teaching for four years. There was a group of American commanders who were very interested in learning Kendo, Judo, Aikido, especially Karate. Those military then went to Europe. They began to teach this sport to Europeans and that made this sport very popular. Therefore, we can say that thanks to that competition we organized, Karate has not only become popular in Japan, but all over the world. Is there much difference between the way to teach Karate in 1940, for example, and the way to teach Karate nowadays? This book was born to teach Karate to the US military, because when we taught them, they always asked why the positions and other things were like that. When we taught Japanese, we just had to show the katas, and they learned by observation, whereas the Americans always needed to have the theory of things explained. So I started to investigate this theory, and this book was born, which is very different from the old karate books. When I began to be asked why things were done like this, I had no answer. Then they began to ask why things couldn't be done differently. Then I answered them, so do it as you want, and I will do it the way it is always done. Then I beat them in combat, doing things in the traditional way, and that's why they understood that this was the best way to do it. About three years ago, when I went to the United States, I met an old man who had learned karate the way I taught, and he told me that sometimes some blows he had received at that time still hurt. I have devoted much time to summarize the knowledge in a book of theory. As there are several different styles, we thought to do a competition with all of them. The first competition was the GKA, but that competition didn't have all the styles. That's why we created the Japanese Karate Federation, to unify all the styles. Later we did the first competition of that federation. Could you explain what there is in the symbol of Shotokan? When Master Funakoshi changed the name of Tote for Karate, he was writing his first book. And among the students there was a very famous painter, called Koshugi, who designed this symbol of a tiger in a circle. This was the way in which Mr. Koshugi saw Funakoshi. He said that from outside it can't be seen, but inside he is as strong as a tiger. When one thinks of a master of karate, one thinks in a very strong person, but outside he mustn't be so. Outside he must seem a person as simple as a circle. At present, do you still train, do you just teach, or do you do both? Well, now I just teach the instructors of those who aspire to be instructors. In my life as a karateka, I have done two main works. The first one has been organizing the first competition, and the second one is to teach the American military. Thanks to that, I could learn a lot of theory about karate, which prompted me to write a book. What worries me now is how karate is going to change, the fact of becoming Olympic. This is what we wanted to know, because now with the Olympic Games, the katas will be unified. Could it break the form of its style? We are planning to unify the katas, but I am worried about people losing their style, so we are studying it.
Couldn't therefore the practitioner who wants to participate in a competition of katas lose his style? I think that the trend will be to learn to win the competition. The karate wasn't designed for competition. But after what I said about the competitions, these competitions have become very popular. And that is the reason why many people who practice karate only think about winning the competitions and they learn karate just for that. Why did Funakoshi change the name of katas? As I have already said, karate is from Okinawa and it has much to do with China. When it was called Tote, they always called the katas with the original Chinese names. But when it was moved to Japan and was established among the Japanese sports, such as Judo or Kendo, the Japanese wanted to give Japanese names for the techniques and they didn't want to use Chinese names, which was more natural for them. For example, the Kan Ku was formerly called Kosho Kushan Ku, but nobody knew what it meant. Then Funakoshi gave it the name of Kan Ku, which was a name with a religious and philosophical sense, and it has also a lot of meaning for the Japanese. That's why Master Funakoshi changed the names, so that the Japanese understand it. Can you tell us something about Otsuka-sensei? We met at university. By that time I was third dan and Mr. Otsuka was fourth dan. Mr. Otsuka was a very serious man. He was eager to learn and raise his technical level. His first sport was not karate, but he also wanted to learn karate to increase his knowledge. And when we did uke, for example, we blocked the blow with all our strength. But in the case of Master Otsuka, this was not like this. He allowed the blow pass. And in the Jodan position, Master Otsuka had his arm higher. For example, he didn't do Yokogeri, because he thought that it was not a natural movement. That is why he changed the Yokogeri for my Geri. Do you have any relationship with Otsuka's son, Giro Otsuka, nowadays? I keep in touch with him in the derivation of Wado Ryu, because there are two groups. One of them is the one led by Master Otsuka, and then there is another style of Wado which is a bit different. And what is the most important one, Wado Ryu or Wado Kai? Technically, Master Otsuka Wado Ryu is more important. I insist on the topic of the Olympic Games. I think it's great that karate is one of the sports of the Olympic Games. But without forgetting the origin, the traditions and the meaning of karate. This is a message especially for young people who learn karate. You mustn't think of karate as a method of fight. This is something people tend to think especially in foreign countries. There are different competitions and different degrees of contact. If karate depends on that, then there are several ways to teach karate. In addition, there are other sports in China or Korea, which are similar to karate. And if karate is introduced in the Olympic Games, China, for example, will also want to introduce its sport. The problem is that the Olympic Committee won't want to have several similar sports. As I said, karate is a sport with very old traditions. But as competitions have become so popular, there are people who only think about winning the competition. So they don't learn the basics. They just learn to compete and beat the adversary. As you have also written a book about Wado Ryu, I would like to study the original Wado Ryu karate because depending on its future in the Olympic Games, karate can easily change its form and there is a very big difference with the original.